what is up guys welcome back so this week i've been really sick and home all week because of you know why and uh i took it into my hands since i'm stuck at the house all week that i was going to get a lot of my bunkers and badasses stuff done so i built a whole box of curse city which is a Warhammer game, but I'm using that for bunkers. But I painted, I rebased and painted all of the bunkers and badasses minis. So let's hop over to that shelf, show you guys like a pan of what they look like. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring them over to the, the desk and I'm going to break down each miniature, how I did them, and uh, the different struggles I had with different minis. So let's do that. All right, so we're going to start with Krieg. Krieg was not too difficult to deal with. Um, his mask, that is one thing that um, was kind of difficult, was doing his mask, because his mask, of course, has the vault symbol on it. And... Of course, these miniatures are, obviously, you can see, compared to my finger, that's my middle finger, how big he is. So, yeah, very difficult to do Krieg, but it was manageable. Um, his buzz axe is quite smaller than you would expect the miniature to have, um, but... You know, I could still work around that as well. So, you kind of, with these miniatures, you kind of have to let the washes do a lot of the work because of um, the detail that is there on the miniature is very, very small. So, that's what makes it really pop in the long run. But overall, this miniature ended up being pretty good. And I like the base that I gave him. It's like one of the sewer bases, but stone with a piece like that. Now, one of my least favorite minis of the set is Lilith. And that is because of the lack of detail that is in the face. So her face is like barely any detail. But you can make up for that with making obviously a really good base and then making all of the pieces of armor and fabric on her and her hair make all that pop once you make everything else pop because usually you want the center of your miniature to be the face this one's not going to be that case so you make everything else pop so there's a lot going on in the miniature so this is what i did with this one and uh, I think it ended up coming out as well as it needed to come out. Um, everybody really likes this one, but this is the one that I actually like the least. But that's only because of the facial features that were on this mini. So, yeah. All in all, um, it's still nice to have a Lilith miniature um, that is usable in bunkers and badasses.
Now, on the other hand, I think that Maya ended up coming out really well. Um, her facial features picked up really well with the wash. Um, her clothes are, you know, designed really well so that when you're painting it, you can separate things. And there's a lot there that picks up with the washes. So since there's a lot there to work with, with what you're working with, with painting and stuff like that, um, you're able to do a lot with this miniature. And then to finish it all off, I, of course, made a specific base for her as well. Um, I wanted to do some of the characters in an outside setting and some in, like, a sewer setting, stone floor setting, stuff like that. So, I do like the way that this turned out. This is um, the better Siren that I did. Um, but, man, I really am uh, proud of these miniatures and this siren Maya is really really uh nice I do like the way that they molded her and the sculpt for the for the miniature as well now in all of the Borderlands games I always start out with the soldier I love playing the soldier and uh this is Axton. Axton is from Borderlands 2. Um, and I really do like what they did here with this sculpt. Um, everything picked up pretty well. The, uh, the miniature is pretty well made. And, you know, you got the pouches and stuff on the back. Um, which picked up really well with washes. And I was able to do a lot of good highlights in his pants with the green. And his jacket, which is two different types of browns I used. Um, the doll gun. I um, I just did my own thing with this gun. Because I tried to find the gun online to kind of match a paint scheme. But that just didn't work. I could not find this gun to save my life. And I don't know why. Um, I was looking all through Borderlands 2 guns just to get a color scheme right. But could not find it. I also did the yellow uh the yellow piece right here with the stripes um that is very tiny i mean that's my my finger that's compared to my finger i i did that all by um freehand it was just freehanded so there is a couple miniatures in this set that i had to freehand a bunch of crazy stuff on and that is one of them and i'm proud of it i'm i'm really proud that i had the skill to freehand a piece like that and uh, was able to do all these miniatures with a really co cool freehanding. Um, I don't do a lot of freehanding, so it's very nice to get the skill while I can do it. Now we're moving on to Brick. Brick is obviously the biggest of the uh, set of miniatures that we got. Um, he's more on scale with regular miniatures actually in general so hold on this is like a regular scale miniature um right next to him a lot of the other miniatures are very small compared to any other miniature to be honest um with brick he was really simple he has a dark jacket bandana on his head um i put a lot of the effort into highlighting the stuff that's on his jacket highlighting his pants so that his jeans have good highlights on it. And then I put a lot of effort into the rocket that he's using, or his rocket launcher, because um, it's a massive weapon that he's holding. So I tried to give a lot of the guns personality like they are in the game. And I did look up a rocket launcher that looked exactly like this in Borderlands 2 so that I could um, replicate the color scheme and stuff like that. Um, I play so much Borderlands, but to remember all of the color schemes and shit like that is almost impossible with how many guns there are in the game. And of course, with this base, I did like a sewer base and, uh, had the water and the sewer pipe and the stone flooring. And I did some metal pieces for his armor and his chains on him. So... All in all, this piece is really cool. Um, he was a lot easier to work on because he was bigger. So 
that is a plus but he is the one of the only bigger ones there him and zero but zero is not even technically bigger he's just taller he's just very skinny Salvador is one of the more unique miniatures I did. Um, I made sure that I painted the tears in his shirt. Um, of course, he has his his you know regular look to Borderlands 2 um, with the orange shirt, jeans, um, boots with the western back pieces. I don't know what they're really called. Um, and then I did a a moxie pistol in his hand, which you probably can't see in the frame but um it says moxie on the side of the pistol and then the gun is a tour gun which is painted after a uh gun that i looked up online so i was really happy i think there's a, a harley hair or something on there right somewhere on there harley's hair gets everywhere it's like so ridiculous she like catches it everywhere. My hands are dirty too from working on stuff. Um, I did the tattoos on his arm, his arms, both arms. And then I finished it off with a really neat base. So it's like a sewer base, water, and then there's tentacles coming out. Um, it just gives it more flavor and more um, of a, uh, it, it, like a scene. Like it kind of gives it a scene, but it just, I don't know, it just makes this this miniature more unique than it was. So, yeah, I'm very proud of this miniature. Um, I do like the way that this one turned out, and I'm glad that I was able to paint this, um, especially this tour gun, the way that I did, because I think it really makes a difference. Now we're moving on to Gage. So the Necromancer is really, really cool and really fun to paint. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on. So I, it was the first uh, miniature that I started painting with the sewer bases. So I was really working hard on the water here. Um, I like how the silver paint that I did do on, on just the pipes there reflects the water. So like when you're looking at the mini, it's kind of blue. Um, not, I used a different silver for the pipe, um, but for the bolts in the, in the, in the smaller pipes in the front, or the bars, I used a brighter silver. I did some freehand on her socks, or her stockings or whatever, so the stripes, that was all freehanded by me. Um, I freehanded her lunchbox thing, um, that was kind of just, it's small, so I just tried to freehand that as well. Um, her face picked up really well with the washes and stuff. Um, her mech arm pops. I made sure the little belt vault symbol was painted yellow. Um, her shoes are light blue. I worked on the, the, um, highlighting the red dress. Um, on the back there, you see the skull. That's a white. And then her hair goes in two different directions because she has pigtails. Um, that's, you know, folded in the back and with her hands going through it. So this piece, even though there's a lot going on with it, I had a, I think this is the one miniature I had the most fun painting because of how many new things I had to do with this. I had to try many different things to make sure this miniature worked. And I think this came out perfect i wouldn't do anything different with this i love the way that gauge turned out now for a lot of you guys i think that this may be your favorite manager that i've done and that's because of how crazy i did this base um with mordecai i felt like there was not a lot going on with his miniature the position that he's in was basically just like that on the base and it was a plain base. So with the other ones, I just peeled all of them off their bases, cut them from their bases, and uh, tried to make little scenes with them. And with Mordecai, you kind of, 
you kind of have to do something different. He's always in like a wilderness type of setting. Um, he always has a flying bird-like creature with him. So I made sure that I found something in my box of miniatures and stuff to use. There was a bird. So I was like, all right, I can use this. And then I wanted to elevate him with like down trees because he is a sniper. So it would just be more right for him to be higher up um, as a sniper type of miniature. Look, there's more hair. <laughs> but yeah, like I felt like this miniature, I did really well with this. I think I, I nailed it with this one. A lot of people actually really do like this miniature a lot. I um, actually like Roland and Salvador the most. Um, but that's because I love Roland and Salvador too, so, and Axton. Um, Mordecai, I, I'm, I love Mordecai as a character, I just, um, his outfit, I just don't connect with it, I think that's what it is. Um, but all in all, I think I did pretty good, I think I did justice for Mordecai and his miniature for Bunkers and Badasses. Now, I felt like if I did zero wrong, um, I'd get a lot of backlash because he is a very loved character through the just the fan base of Borderlands in general. And I think I did pretty good here. I mean, he, there's not too much going on with him. Um, more and more hair. Like, holy shit. There's not a lot going on with him because he's so slender and like, you know, not just, it, there's just not a lot going on with, with what he has on him. But there is a lot of detail in his slim outfit. Plus, he's he's holding one of the uh, uh, infinite pistols, so um, I painted that up. I tried to do the symbol on there as well. I don't know if you can see that or not on the video or not, but I tried to catch all that stuff. I did do the zero on his his jacket i'm trying to let that zoom or like to clear up but there's a zero on his chest and then on his face obviously i painted that as well so in different angles it looks like it's like in front of his face um obviously not every angle is going to give you that effect but um there is some angles that makes it look like like that one it makes it clear up <laughs> it makes it look like um it's in front of his face his sword i did the light blue like it is in the games and i i, I edge highlighted it with white so that it would just pop i don't know why this is the one miniature that just doesn't want to stay clear on on screen but um, i apologize for that um but yeah, I, I think this ended up turning out pretty decent for me painting zero. Lastly, I worked on Roland. Roland is my all-time favorite Borderlands character. He was my first character I've ever played in the first Borderlands period, and I loved him throughout this whole entire time even though he died in Borderlands 2 he makes a huge impact in the story even though he's already passed away and it's just he's just an amazing character to me and just for him being the initial character that I played in the first Borderlands it was my first steps into the series and I would never change that um yeah, so I try to do my complete justice with Roland, even down to his tattoo on his arm, this skull piece right there. I had that all done. And um, I decided to do red pants because he is a ex-Atlas soldier. And I gave him a Hyperion gun. And I did the stripes, the gray stripes on his shirt. I hand did that. That's all freehand. And I busted my ass last night 
trying to get all of that freehand done. And I want to make sure that it pops for you guys so you guys can see all of that work I put in. I killed myself last night trying to get all of that freehand. And of course, this is another one of the bases that are outside. So I made sure that he was more elevated and stuff like that. And I put some grass tufts to give it some life. And that was it. I am very, very proud of this role. And I'm really happy to have him a part of my Bunker Than Badasses and all of these miniatures are actually going to be NPCs since that all of my players are actually their own characters. They made their own um, Vault Hunters and I'm happy because now I can use all of these miniatures as, you know, people that they interact with, which is great because this just makes it feel like Borderlands 2 or 3. So, yeah, very excited. Before we go, I do want to show you one more miniature, um, just for shits and giggles. Now you all know that you guys cannot do Bunkers and Badasses without having your own Bud Stallion. Um, I had to do a little bit of things with this miniature. It had like a, like a chin, a chin piece where like hair was coming down. I cut that off, um, and then I repainted up the hair and I put these sparkles on there so I don't know if you can really tell let me move the light but there's sparkles on her body and when you're moving her around she actually sparkles like she is like made of diamonds so I really went out and tried to make butt stallion perfect for um bunkers and badasses I was really happy with the way that she turned out um, especially with the type of paint that I had to use. It was very uh, di different, very difficult, and it wasn't like regular miniature paint. So, yeah, this is my butt stallion. Of course, it's, uh, this is like a regular, like, D&D &D type of um, miniature that you can get at gaming stores. Um, but you can do that. It's a unicorn, and that's all you really need. So, yeah, that is butt stallion for bunkers and badasses. Be sure to tell me what you guys think in the comments down below. Remember to leave this video a huge like and subscribe if you haven't already. It took me two nights to actually get all of those miniatures done. And that was just the painting process. Before that, it took me a little bit of time trying to figure out what I wanted to do with their bases. And they actually sat on this table for quite some time. Actually, for the past maybe year, ever since Bunkers came out they've been on this table and just sitting there waiting to get painted and i just was not i wasn't scared to paint them i just wanted my skill base to be very high before tackling them because i have two bunkers and badasses okay i have the one that's open the one that i painted the miniatures and then i have one that's completely sealed the one that's open that's for us to play and the other one's for the collection and I did that because I didn't want to mess up the miniatures. But if I had to, I had a shot at just making them work. Also, um, we are soon going to be getting the um, Mr. Torg's badassery. There's a, it's a board game, another board game. And I kickstarted it. So I'm going to be getting those miniatures plus all of the um, tier miniatures that you get for kickstarting with them. So that is very exciting for me because all of those miniatures are going to be used in my Parkers and Badasses. Will I play that board game? Maybe. It depends on if my buddy wants to play that with me. But for the most part, I'm using all of those miniatures for Bonkers and Badasses. And that was my sole purpose in kickstarting it in general anyway. So... Yeah, guys, tell me what you guys think in the comments down below. Um, and if you are interested in Bunkers and Badasses or miniature painting and stuff like that, um, yeah, like subscribe to the channel because I'm going, you know, I am now fully a Borderlands, Tiny Teams Borderlands and Bunkers and Badasses channel. So Tabletop is a part of my channel now. So if that is something that interests you, 
be sure to subscribe because I paint everything for bunkers. I buy Warhammer for bunkers. I buy D&D miniatures for bunkers. It doesn't matter what it is. I put it in my bunkers and badasses no matter what. So if that's just something that interests you, hit the subscribe button. Um, also, um, yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate you guys checking this out. Um, if you don't follow me on Instagram, go be sure to follow me there. Um, you might actually came to this video from Instagram because those pictures of the miniatures um, have been getting a lot of foot traffic, which is really good because um, I'm trying to get people to see the channel and see my skill with this stuff and my passion for Borderlands and Bunkers and Badasses. So, as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you all in the next one. Bye.